Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Tony, and welcome to a Star Citizen Ship Guide. In this continuing series, I'll take you through all the important stats that you need to know if you're thinking of buying this ship. Then we'll take a tour of the inside and out, and I'll give you some of my thoughts. Don't forget, if you're thinking about getting into Star Citizen, then check in the description below for my referral code, and you can also see it on screen now, and you'll get 5,000 starting credits. And don't forget, before we start, to hit that subscribe button, press the notification bell so you never miss another video, and give this video a like. Right, without further ado, let's crack straight on with it. The Drake AS-1 Cutlass Blue is the go-to patrol ship for militia and law enforcement, featuring an onboard quantum dampener, a versatile weapons package, and a bank of prisoner containment systems, the Cutlass is built to protect citizens and suppress dangerous outlaws. Right, let's check out some of them stats. Manufacturer, Drake Interplanetary. Role, Interdiction. Size, Medium. Crew, 1 to 2. Cargo capacity of 12. Production state, Flight Ready. Insurance and in-game. Claim time of 14 minutes 51. Expedite of 2 minutes 29, Expedite fee of 3715 Alpha UEC. If you want to buy it in game, it's just under 2.5 million Alpha UEC. Rental is 49,000 Alpha UEC per one day. Cost 175 US dollars. It was originally 150 and it's time limited sales only. Specifications length 29 meters, beam 21, height 8, combat speed 165. Max speed of 1114, mass of 226,700. Weapons wise, it's got two times size two distortion repeaters giving 748 DPS and two times size two Gatling guns at 636 DPS. It also has a manned turret with two times size two Panthers, which give a total of 880 DPS. Missiles wise, 24 Tempest 2s, which give over 14 thousand damage dps in total then is 1383 on the guns 880 man it can do a grand total of and get this 84,214 damage with its missiles and a total hp of 21,120 now for the purposes of comparison, I put it against the Stalker as that has some prisoner pods, so it's kind of the same thing. The Mantis, which is just the best looking ship in the game, I love it, but it's useless. <laughs> and the Cutty Black, just because it's within, it's something you might upgrade to if you had the Cutty Black or you're thinking about going something a bit better with a bit more damage, you might go up to that, so that's why I picked the Cutty Black. So max speed, it comes third with 1,210, the Stalker wins that one. SCM speed of 198, it comes first. Max your slash pitch, it comes third with 50. Hull HP, it's first with 21,120. Shields, it also comes first with 29,168. DPS, it comes first yet again with 2263. Damage, it blows everything out of the water with 84,214 and comes first again. Cargo, it comes second to the black, which has 46 cargo space. The blue only has 12. Quantum range, it wins yet again. It's 382. You're going to be able to go anywhere in this thing. And to me, if you just look at that, it blows all the other competitions out of the water. So yeah, that is all the stats right there. So now a bit of an external tour. I've got a lot more footage to show you. This is just kind of more of a close-up one. The disruption guns are under the front wings, kind of like to the left right now. You can see the Gatling guns. You can see the turrets there with the red and blue light. And then at the rear, you can see the missile rack housing its own little like housing, which I think looks really cool. I would love it if I had kind of like a sliding door that went up and down, you know, kind of like a stealth fighter. And then all the missiles came flying out. Under the landing gear, all you got at the back is a ramp access. You can see the VTOL engines there, which I'm just running past now. You've then got the airlocks. I presume this is how you're going to get the prisoners in and out of the ship. Rather than having standard doors, having airlocks. And it's totally mirrored on the other side with the missiles there. Then the turret and then the guns. And then, as I said, the other guns are just below the wing. Let's have a look at a few more external shots. 
So as you can see from these shots, you can see the, the cannons below the wings. You can see that rounded canopy. And I've also put all the red and blue lights on so you can see it. it's all its glory flashing away. And I think it looks rather cool when you look at it like that as well. Right, and now time for a little bit of an internal tour. We're going to start with the cargo bay. Not much to see here. You can't really hold much cargo. You've got a little bit of component housing. None of this can be opened as yet. You've also got a panel to open the rear door. It's pretty much mirrored on both sides. So you can see the panel there just to open, close, or lock. Moving into the main area, this is where you would store your prisoners. There's six bays on each side, so 12 in total. You would have had a very busy day if you were getting all 12. You can see there, they just sort of line up. And I guess in the future, you might be able to like move them kind of like a dry cleaner. <laughs> so you'd be like, right, prisoner one, two, three, four. And you got a sort of vital stats sign um, screen there, which I guess would show you each individual pod. Moving at this area, you've got more component housing. You've also got this locked locker and gun cabinet, which I really like the idea of that because you would have them sort of things in that area. Kind of like Con Air, they would be locked off so you can't get into them. You've got the um, airlocks on both sides. Moving into the habitation area, you've got an unlocked weapons area there. More storage, which is not openable at the moment. Then you've got a bed rack. You've not got a kitchen or anything in here, so you wouldn't be able to like, have drinks, foods, or water. There's the turret. There's some more storage. There's more armor lockers there, which are unlocked again. Moving up these steps, which I quite like the little glue there. You've got two seats, so you've got the um, co-pilot seat and the pilot seat. You've got a really nice like surround bubble as well, the way that bubble comes across. You can see right up and into space. You can even see the lights there flashing onto the canopy. So yeah, what do I think of this ship? Well, unfortunately, its biggest issue is the fact that the gameplay loop it's designed for doesn't exist. Like... Bounty hunting isn't in the game yet. I don't think it's even on the roadmap. So we're not seeing it for another year at least. Also, if you activate your quantum dampener, which is one of the features of this ship, you get a crime stat if you're within a comma ray radius. Like, so what's the point? Why would you use it? Yes, it's a little bit better than the Mantis because it has way more DPS and stuff. But again, like the Mantis, the Mantis is one of my favorite looking ships in the game. It's one of them things that look like it should be in Star Trek. And that's what I want to be when I'm flying. That's why I love the Pisces as well because it reminds me of something from Star Trek. This ship does look good. It's got lights. It's got red and blue lights. What more could you want? But the gameplay loop it's designed for just isn't there. The Cutlass Black can do everything it can do. You can increase the DPS and missiles and stuff on the black to match the blue. So overall, what's the point of spending 50 extra dollars on getting the blue for some flashing lights? There isn't really any point. Once all the gameplay comes in and we do have bounty hunting, or if shall I say, bounty hunting comes in, when it's working and all that, yeah, this blue is going to be brilliant to have in game. And the fact it can be used as a one person ship, yeah, it does have two crew there because you can put some turret. But this thing will blast people out the water with one crew. You'll be able to do bounty hunting and look pretty cool doing it as well. Just imagine turning up to a planet, turning your little lights on, the rest and so on. How cool is that going to be? So, yeah, for me, it's just pointless at the moment. I just don't think it's worth the extra cost. I picked it up in the latest fleet sale, the Invictus week. I got it, flew it around a little bit, and was just like, yeah, there's no point in this, is it? So as much as I love it, it's going to get melted and traded back, and I'm just going to go back to Cutlass Black and pick something else up. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.